While his figure, figure might have been seen by some, his face was seen by none. Prison for decades, but never to the public's knowledge, this is the story of the man in the iron mask. As recently as 2015, new documents about this centuries-old case were discovered. Thought to belong to French jailer Benin Daverne de Saint-Mars, among them are letters between him and ministers serving under King Louis XIV. The letters were regarding a new prisoner. Benin was a French prison governor, which is kind of like a warden. At the time, the letter was sent in 1669. The prison he was in charge of at the time was Pignoro. In the letter from Marquis de Louis, the jail was instructed to prepare a special cell with much emphasis on security and privacy. It was to have two doors that could open the same way so no conversations could ever be heard. He was given basic food provisions, and if he talked about anything other than what he was asked directly, he would be killed immediately. Then, we were finally given a name, Eustache Dauger. Historians have noticed the prisoner's name on the letter was written in a different handwriting than the rest of the letter, suggesting even the prison clerk didn't know who he was. The letter went on to say that the prisoner would be no trouble and that he was only a valet. Despite the lack of danger, he was never to be seen by other inmates and was to always wear a mask. It is thought that the prisoner arrived at the prison late August 1669. Pignaro was a jail far away from the royal court and designed to house only a handful of inmates, mainly people who were not deemed appropriate for society. In jail with the new prisoner was an Italian diplomat who supposedly double-crossed the French over the sale of a strategically important fortress town on the Italian border, a French man named Lausen who was in prison for trying to marry the king's cousin without consent, and a former superintendent arrested for embezzlement. These new neighbors, however, would never see their new jail buddy's face. Based on many fictional and local lore accounts, the man was to always wear a mask made of pure iron. However, nowadays, historians agree that he probably wore an iron mask sometimes when he was out and about, but probably wore a black velvet mask most of the time. Whatever the reasons for locking up the prisoner are, it was clear that knowledge of his existence must remain limited. When supposedly richer and more powerful prisoners needed a valet, the masked man was considered. In 1675, the role of valet became open under prisoner Nicolas Fouquet, a financer jailed for embezzling the king's funds. He granted the masked man the job under the condition that he only worked for Nicolas and only worked for Nicolas while he was alone. While this was granted, Benin St. Mars told Nicolas that he must never talk to anyone about his new valet, especially to fellow prisoner Marquis de Lazun. However, Lazun was released shortly after all this happened, and even with Freed was never granted the knowledge of who the man was, securing the seeker even more from the outside world. The mass prisoner was always wherever Governor Benin St. Mars was posted. From Pignero to nearby exiles and in 1687 to the Larens Islands, which is half a mile offshore from Keynes. By this point, guards transporting the prisoner had started to spread word about a strange man in a mask, and soon, word got around the whole country. It said that while traveling, two musketeers were always by his side, and should he ever attempt to remove the mask, he was to die immediately. In 1698, Benin St. Mars made his last move to Bastille in Paris. It was in this prison in 1703 the prisoner would die. They said the man wore the same black velvet mask all the way to his grave. As you can imagine, historians have been working on this case for centuries now. The most popular theory that the man was the king's brother. It's been suggested by French writer and philosopher Voltaire that the man was the king's illegitimate half-brother, while more modern Hollywood adaptations have said that he was even his twin. Another popular theory is that the man was the king's blood father who was set up by plotting Cardinal Richelieu to impregnate the then queen without the knowledge of King Louis XIII. He then was sent to the Americas only to return and try to extort money from the crown. So it's theorized the king threw him in jail and masked him for fear his true identity would destroy the legitimacy of the new king. But back to the name Eustache Dogger. Historians have found further information about Eustache Dogger. It was said he was the son of Cardinal Richelieu. In 1659, he was reprimanded for his role at a party that involved a satanic black mass ritual. It was said many men were arrested there, but there's no definite evidence if Eustache was actually there. It's also theorized he was arrested in 1665 for murdering a newspaper boy, but again, there's no definite proof. As recently as 2016, a historian suggested that the name belonged to the valet of the crown's treasurer, Cardinal Mazarin, who had discovered the cardinal had stolen from English royalty. Eustache was then jailed en masse and told to remain silent or be murdered. And, after all that, there are other historians who suggest the name Dauger was a pseudonym as the real Eustache died of heavy drinking in the late 1680s.
Between 1847 and 1850, the French writer Alexandre Dumas published in mass production his story The Victomte de Braguelon. In it, he writes about the king's twin brother being sent away as a prisoner to live out for years, forever masked to conceal his identical appearance to King Louis. And that story is what inspired many popular movies, most notably the 1998 Man in the Iron Mask starring Leonardo DiCaprio. In 1965, French novelist Marcel Pagnol supported this theory stating that having examined the circumstances of the king's birth, he had been one of the twins. Pagnol noted that there were not the usual witnesses at the king's birth and that a study of the king's genealogy showed a regular occurrence of twins. Despite Louis being born first and therefore the true king, the crown feared a lifelong dispute. So, the other child was banished to live in Jersey as James de la Cloche, who did return to France to conspire against his brother before being arrested in 1669. So, what do you think? The most popular theory is the twin brother, but I'm not so sure of it myself. There's a lot of good theories here, and it's just a really interesting story. I suggest you go do your own research if you're still, uh, if you're still interested. Check out the movie, and uh, check out this book too, because it's really awesome. And yeah, that's basically all I have for you on the story. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Thank you for subscribing, liking, and commenting, and I appreciate it. See you again soon.